slow start from the Steamers. They need to get their hands on the ball and get some good territory. And I think this is the first time a Steamers player has actually run into the Waikato half. The ball's been there occasionally, but the players have had little possession down this end, and now they're going to perhaps thrive on it. And it's a slight... Just remember what we agreed on the change in for the game. And Eventually, it was struck off and brought him down. The first scrum of the match. Touch, pause, engage, middle in. In nine, good. That's pretty solid from the home side. Blair takes it upon himself to clear. And taken well. Pratichetti. McLean fires that back line again. And here is the replacement, Bacchetti. Brought down by Tom Evans. Back. Castor Giovanni is smashed in midfield, took it at a standstill and took the punishment. Mirko Bergamasco, still Italy, Bortolami. Mir Mauro Bergamasco, forward pass to Zani. But as we expected, Italy... First of all, let me give you some news, news from the dressing rooms. Neither coach opted for major changes from last time out. For the Ospreys, Andrew Bishop is fit this week after a shoulder injury, and he replaces Jonathan Spratt. James Hook starts at 10 with James Bigger on the bench. In the pack, just one change sees Paul James start at prop. Duncan Jones relegated to the replacements. And just look at that back row. Collins, Holler and Ryan Jones, a serious challenge for any team. Ulster coach Brian McLaughlin is forced to make a few changes. Injuries to Bryn Cunningham and Ryan Caldwell see Clinton Shifkowski and Ed O'Donoghue in the starting 15. Andrew Trimble and Paddy Wallace are unavailable. Darren Cave starts instead of Trimble at 13. In the replacements, Ulster include a few faces, hoping for a first appearance in this season's Magnus League. Dimati Harua joined in the summer. Killian Willis and Niall O'Connor cover the halfbacks, and Johnny Shields is promoted from the academy. Ospreys welcome back Jonathan Thomas after a long layoff due to a groin injury. Tommy Bow will relish the chance to get some game time against his old province. Ospreys will kick off. James Hook with the ball in hand there. He's waiting for the whistle from Alan Lewis. Ospreys all in black. Hook goes for height rather than distance this time. Black shirts up very quickly indeed and win the ball straight from the... Start, but the whistle blows. The ball was knocked forward. Knocked forward by Ulster. Scrum to the Ospreys. Wayne, just watch the bind far side that they both come up together, not to the ground. Seconds. Shoulders above the level of the hips, guys, in the crouch yeah. position. Crouch. Yeah, Alan Lewis there Touch. talking to his Pause, assistant referee, Wayne Davies, just asking to watch the bind. The scrums have been a little bit troublesome so far this season. It's early days yet, of course. Sonny Parker with ball in hand, gets across the 22, slips away from a tackle. Does well to keep his body in play. Jerry Collins protecting the ball. Phillips. Ian Goff hold to the ground. Ulster defence holds the first wave. Phillips once again. Andrew Bishop, little pop pass. Bishop burrowing in there, the ball is again there for the Ospreys. Once again, Ospreys. Richard Hibbert carrying this time. Phillips now. Change direction, go to the left. Ulster defence is holding well so far, but the Ospreys are moving that ball around quickly. And they create an extra man here. Jerry, Jerry Collins, big cheer from the home crowd when he gets the ball. The men in white shirts hold up that attack. Phillips a little glance to see is there anything on himself and Andy Lloyd just getting away in the way the ball carrier there relief for Ulster well, a bright start from the Ospreys Killian Mike Phillips waits Andy Powell who set that last move up takes play up to the Welsh 22 Stephen Jones positions right there last man for the kick Phillips instead looks for Roberts and Lee Byrne. Wait here, wait here. Paul Saki. Good tackle, Tom Shanklin. No hands. Saki again. No, he doesn't. Martin Williams has stolen it. Matthew Reese, the hooker. 
offloads to Ian Cop. Adam Jones, Stephen Jones, Lee Byrne, Andy Powell outside him, Halfpenny outside him. Here's Halfpenny! What a start by Wales in the second half! Oh, what a difference! Lee Halfpenny scores! Well, if you look here, the Wales backs the ball in hand and head up, realised that the inside defender inside Cueto was Borthwick, and Borthwick was turned inside and out, and why wouldn't he be? Because he's a second row. But the initial thing, Dallin Armitage needed to get right into Saki there when he took that ball in. As soon as he was away from there, the ball was turned over, and there were gaps. And here, if you look out here, you can see Borthwick in a second there we are the three on two anyway won't we in left right Cueto decides he has to come in in the end and that's an easy finish and I'm afraid that England being down to ten men this time so not ten men it's why I've been for ten minutes of cost some dear the turnover work by the Welsh forwards and then the quick hands by the Welsh forwards Matthew for a second try Ooh, it seemed there that he was trying to put the ball out, I agree, and that is a penalty offence. It's also now a penalty offence to pull down the mall. Hooray! And the Lions going for one here. Tom Croft on the floor, trying to squeeze it back to Phillips, which he has done. Here is Mike Phillips to Alan Wynne-Jones whose leadership on this tour has really been impressing the management in training and now in the match situation good ball from Stephen Jones to Tommy Bow. he's got Brian O'Driscoll, you won't miss this but O'Driscoll underneath the post, try number two it's starting to look very good indeed combinations are coming together aren't they? and the style of play too no chance, you can't criticise Vandal Melvin for that he's back to square one as, as you were from uh, Mears this time there to Alan Wynne Jones. <laughs> Phillips, Stephen Jones, Brian O'Driscoll, he knew exactly where Stephen Jones was. And there's Rob Carney cutting back inside. Beautiful unzipping of the defence. And again, onto Tommy Bow. Now that is. A beautiful try. <laughs> Middle, please, nine. Middle. Yeah, he came in from the side, but uh, the Touch. infringement had already in. occurred, for, fortunately for Rocky Elson. Big scrum this time from the spring box. But George Smith has it at the back under pressure and does well. Back to Barnes in the 22, is carried back, so he can't kick it out on the full. And the bounce is a good one. Oh, not bad off the left foot. They've been very good at that rolling ball tonight, the Springboks. The Wallabies have just got to try and shut it down early, get that jumper on the deck. As soon as the jump... ...pullback for Gloucester. Deciding to chip this one. Where's the bounce going to go? It's going to go to a dragon's hand and Bustle, who somewhat blindly whacks that one upfield. Right by Nicolo. Straightening it through. Oh, brilliant break from him. Puts it on the plate. Must be a huge chance now for Gloucester. Was that forward? And Gareth's got it down. And the try has been given. What a brilliant counter-attack by Gloucester. You see what he means to the crowd here at King's Hope. They want to see Leslie Benacola run the ball back in the opposition. And didn't he do that? Just that. He backed himself, looked downfield, saw an opening. The kick chase wasn't quite there. Hustle kicked the ball originally downfield and got flat at the time. He stepped inside. And Th Thomas missed the tackle, looked outside, who was there, Molina. Yes, he drew the man. Couldn't get it a score. We can't see from that angle whether that was forward or not. But that's the power. Having Thomas missed the tackle originally. By the time. 
difficult to tell from that angle whether it's forward or not. 